This video is about determination of physiologic dead space. Now, in order to uh, determine physiologic dead space, uh, we first have to um, know the anatomic dead, dead space and the functional dead space. Let's say this there there's two alveoli here, okay? And let's say this is the bronchial. Now we know that the terminal bronchioles do not take part in respiration, but respiratory bronchioles does. So let's say this this shaded area is the is a bronchial which does not take part in respiration, and this shaded alveoli did not take part in a particular respiration. Okay, even though this particular alveoli is capable of respiring, it just did not take part in the respiration. So now we can say that this would be our anatomic dead space and this would be our functional dead space because it's functional. It can do gaseous exchange, but it just did not. Okay? So both of them combined together give us our physiologic dead space. Okay? So that's how we calculate dead space. Now the thing is, uh, let's go more in, in depth how we can put down values to uh, measure this. So what we do is on top we take the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the artery minus uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide which is expired. Okay, the E is for expired carbon dioxide and then we divide the whole thing by partial pressure uh, of carbon dioxide in the artery. So we take the difference that is uh, in the artery, then in the expired, so let's say in the artery there, were, there was 100 and the amount that was expired was 80. So the difference is really 20. Then, uh, you know, we can get an idea of how much retained, how much was retained in the artery, divided by the total initial partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So in that way, we will be able to know that in this case, I gave you example 100 minus, tw minus 80 or 20, this 20 millimeter mercury of carbon dioxide did not take part in in gaseous exchange. That's why it remained in the artery. So that's why it's it's the it's the physiologic dead space, which is it can be both anatomic and physiologic together. So now let's uh, see how we can use the dead space we measured into uh, other equations. So let's talk about ventilation. There is really two types of ventilation. There is the minute ventilation and then there is the alveolar ventilation. Now oftentimes ventilation curves looks like this. Okay, So let's say there is volume in liters and there is time here. Okay, And the ventilation graphs look like, look like so. Let's say this is one minute, two minutes, three minutes, la di da. Okay. So to calculate our minute ventilation, okay, to calculate our minute ventilation, we take tidal volume. We take tidal volume times breaths per minute. Okay. That's minute ventilation. And the reason we use this equation, tidal volume times breaths per minute, is because in this, in 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 a minute ventilation, we are not dealing with really the dead space. It is the amount of air that enters and leaves the lungs in one minute. As a result, minute ventilation deals with uh, air that does not take part in. Uh, respiration that is including dead space so minute ventilation is going to include dead space but when we're talking about alveolar ventilation what we're going to do is we're going to take tidal volume minus dead space times breaths per minute okay we're going to subtract in uh, to measure alveolar ventilation we're going to sub sub subtract the dead space from our tidal volume. I don't know why I write TD all the time. It's tidal volume. So it just makes sense because when we go to the alveolus, in the alveolus we are going to get rid of our dead space. 
uh, we just want to measure the alveolar ventilation that takes part in the whole thing. So here, when we measure dead space, uh, the physiologic dead space, we can plug this value right in here to help us find um, alveolar ventilation. So that's pretty much uh, all about, um, about dead space and alveolar and minute ventilation. So, so far we have come across three equations in respiratory. One is how to measure physiologic dead space, how to measure minute ventilation, how to measure alveolar ventilation, and I talked about the difference between the two. And previously we had the um, collapsing pressure is two times uh, tension divided by radius. Okay, so that is also there. So, we, so far we have come, come across four equations in respiratory.